Unit 1, Part A. Activity 2A. Listening. Who is talking? Write their names in your notebook. Hi, I'm 16 years old. I'm not really good at playing chess. I'm in grade 11. I'm British, but I live in Siem Reap. I've got curly blonde hair. I'm taller than my best friend, but he is much better at school than me. I love eating hamburgers and french fries, but I hate vegetables. My favourite subject is geography. I like learning about the world. In the future, I want to be a teacher, just like my mum. Oh, and my favourite sport? Of course, it's football. Who doesn't like football? I'm really good at it too. Can you guess who I am? That's right, I'm Tim. Hello, I'm 18 years old and I'm Gosol's elder sister. I live in Siem Reap too. I like going out for a walk with my friends, but I hate doing my homework. I get a lot of homework every day. Two hours isn't enough to do all of it. I'm good at playing chess, just like my brother, and I love maths too. Maths is my favorite subject, but I'm not good at physics. I get up early every day at six o'clock. I like my school because I have many friends there. My best friend is Bisai, and we like the same things. I've got long black hair, and my mother has a shop at our local market. That's right, I'm Jenny. Unit 1, Part A. Activity 2B. Listen again and complete the profiles. Write the answers in your notebook. Unit 1, Part B. Activity 5B. Listen and check. S sleeps. Works. Z. Plays. Remembers. Drives. Sings. Enjoys. Is. Brushes. Watches. Catches. Unit 2, Part A. Activity 5A. Listen and repeat. Talked. Looked. Played. Stayed. Visited. Wanted. Wanted. 
Unit 2, Part A, Activity 5B. Listen and put the words in the correct column. Unit 2, Part B, Activity 2A. Listen to Chani describing her long school holiday. Write C for things that Chani did, K for things that Casal did, and B for things both of them did. Casal and I had a long holiday from school in September. We didn't really have any family holiday because her father had to work, but it was still a fun holiday because we spent two weeks with our grandparents. My father drove and dropped us at our grandparents' house. We were so happy to see them. While we were there, I went to the market with my grandmother and she cooked a lot of food for us. I helped with the cooking as well, but Gosal didn't help at all. He only ate, lazy Gosal. He either rode his bicycle around the village or played with the neighbor's children. Sometimes, in the late afternoon, our grandfather took us to the lake. Gosal swam with my grandfather all the time, but I didn't. I just went there and relaxed. We also visited and met some of our relatives who live in the same village as our grandparents. I think they were excited to see us. I also learned how to cook some dessert from one of them. Unit 3, Part A, Activity 2B. Listen, check, and repeat. Turn left. Traffic lights. Turn right. Go past. Take the third right. Bridge. Go straight on. Central Reservation. Turn around. Crossing. Roundabout. Unit 3, Part A, Activity 4A. Listen and answer the questions below. Write the answers in your notebook. Excuse me, can you help me find the bank? Sure, you must be a tourist. Yes, I am. It's my first time visiting Sim Rip. Then I have to make sure you find the bank. It's actually a bit far from here. First, do you see that central reservation? Go around it and turn right when you see the swimming pool. Next, turn left at the corner and go straight along that road. You'll see the shopping mall on your left and another road next to it. Just go past them, then you'll see a crossing and a roundabout in front of it. Go straight on and the bank will be on your right. Wait a minute, do I have to turn around at the roundabout? What? No, just go straight. Oh, I understand now. Thank you. You're welcome. Unit 3, Part A, Activity 4B. 
Listen again and look at the map. Where is the starting point? Unit 3, Part B, Activity 1B. Listen, check and repeat. Museum. Railway station. Pagoda. Night market. Supermarket. Bus station. Hospital. Swimming pool. Post office. Shopping mall. Unit 3, Part B, Activity 3A. Listen to the full conversation between Casal and Tim. Write down the sentences that have should. You look upset, Tim. What's wrong? Casal, what should I do? It's almost Lynn's birthday, but I don't know what to get her. First, you should check what she likes now. Hmm, I think she likes animals. Should I buy a teddy bear? You shouldn't buy that. She's not a little girl anymore. How about the book? I think she reads a lot. Yeah, I think you're right. She talked about this novel a few days ago, but where can I buy it? Mm, you should check the bookshop in the shopping mall. If they don't have it, you should ask them to order it for you. You're right. Thanks, Casal. No problem. We are friends after all. But Tim, do you know how to get there? Yes. Ah, go out of the school and take the second left. Then turn right and the shopping mall is on my right. That's right. Good luck. Unit 4, Part A, Activity 2A. Listen to Lynn talking to Casal. Copy the table into your notebook and tick the correct box. Hi, Casal. Oh, hello, Lynn. I haven't seen you for a long time. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Yes, it's been a while. Cosal, can I ask you some questions about your school? It's for my homework. I have to find a Kamai friend and ask them about the rules in their school. Then, in class, we're going to talk about how they're different to the rules in our school. Sure, Lynn. You can ask me. Well, can you just tell me about some of the rules in your school? Then, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Well, let me see. We have a new rule at school this year. You must wear a crash helmet if you ride a scooter to school. If you don't, you can't ride your scooter to school again for a whole week. Oh, and you mustn't cheat when there is a test. If the teacher sees you cheating, you score zero for the test. And you mustn't chew gum in class. A boy did that last week and got into big trouble. Okay. Can you use your mobile phone in class, Cosal? No, you can't use your mobile phone in class. Occasionally, it's okay if you have a good reason. 
and you ask the teacher first, but it's not usually allowed. Oh, and you must put your hand up if you want to say something. If you don't put your hand up first, you can't speak. What about uniform, c a s a l Do you have to wear a uniform? Yes, we do. Some of the boys try to wear a cap in class because they like how it looks, but they can't wear a cap inside the classroom. And the teacher sends them to the principal, but they can wear a cap after school when they are going home. Girls can wear jewelry, but only if it's small and looks nice. Okay, c o s e l Thanks a lot. I think I have enough to share with my class. Actually, I think my school has all the same rules. Well, school is school, Lin. Bye for now, then. See you soon. See you, c o s e l Unit four, part B, activity five. Listen to Jenny asking questions to a worker at the royal palace. Complete the rules for the palace using mustn't, can't, must, or can. One. Can you eat and drink in the palace? No, you aren't allowed to bring food and drinks into the palace. Two. Do you have to put your phone on silent? Yes, all phones have to be on silent when you visit the palace. Three. Can you take information leaflets? No, there aren't any free leaflets in the palace. Four. Can you ask people who work there questions? Yes, there are guards, and they can answer any questions that you have. Five. Do you have to be quiet inside the palace? No, you can talk normally while you're walking around. Just don't make too much noise. Six. Do you have to show your tickets when you go inside? No, you buy your ticket at the door, and you don't have to show it again. Seven. Can you bring dogs into the palace? No, dogs are not allowed inside the building. Eight. Do you have to make a donation? No, a donation isn't necessary. But if you would like to make a donation, we will accept it. Nine. Can you post pictures of the palace on social media? No, posting pictures of the inside on social media isn't allowed. Unit five, part A, activity two A. Listen. How does Banya feel about going to Angkor Wat? How does Tim feel? Oh, this is exciting, Banya. I've seen Angkor Wat many times, but I'm always excited. Really, Tim? But we've been there many times, a thousand times. I don't want to go. I think it would be boring. Oh, but we're going with the whole class, Banya. All sixty of us—that's a lot, and we have a tour guide this time. I've never been there with a tour guide before. Yeah, okay. Our tour guide is our history teacher. How cool is that? Now, children, do you have your notebooks and pens with you? I'd like you to make notes of all the things you will learn today. You can use your phones to make notes if you want. You can also take pictures, but remember to be careful all the time. Next reminder: you can't go around the temples on your own. Stay with a group, and lastly, you can't write anything on the stones. Now, Panya, can you count well? Oh yes, Mrs. Sok. Certainly, I can count from one to one hundred in English. Good. Can you make sure the group stays together? Yes, Mrs. Sok. I will make sure sixty students are together all the time. Excuse me, Mrs. Sok. Can I go to the toilet, please? Really, on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're lucky. This bus has a toilet at the back. You can go to the toilet before we reach the temples.
Unit 5, Part A, Activity 2B. Listen again. Write the missing words. Unit 7, Part A, Activity 1B. Listen, check and repeat. Desert Hill Mountain River Ocean Lake Forest Waterfall Volcano Unit 7, Part A, Activity 2B. Tim and Casal are playing a game called Guess What? Listen and write the sentences they use to describe the places below. Let's play a game, Casal. I'm so bored. Yeah, sure, Tim. Let's play... Guess what? I'll start first. It's a place that is drier than normal land. Huh. Mm. Uh, desert. Correct. My turn. It's smaller than a mountain, but it's higher than the ground. Is it a hill? Yes. Okay, so... It's a place that has taller and bigger trees than a park. Hmm. I, I don't know this one. I'll give you another hint. It also has more trees than a park. Hmm. Somewhere that has more trees? It's a forest. Oh, okay. Next one. It's... Bigger and saltier than a lake. Easy. It's the ocean. Then, oh, my mom's here. Oh, no. One more time. Okay, fine. It's higher than a hill and more explosive than a small bomb. Is it a volcano? Yes, that's correct. Congratulations, Tim. See you tomorrow. Bye. Unit 7, Part A, Activity 5B. Listen and check. The Antarctic Desert and the Sahara Desert are drier than other types of land with barely any precipitation every year. Precipitation is a word for snow or rain. While the cold desert, Antarctica, is covered by a huge sheet of ice with temperatures between minus 10 degrees C and minus 60 degrees C, the Sahara has a hotter temperature of around 40 degrees C to 47 degrees C, making it one of the hottest deserts. These areas are also more difficult and more dangerous to live in for most humans and animals. Only 2% of Antarctica isn't fully covered by ice, and that is where seals, penguins and other birds live. In contrast, the Sahara is full of sand, but it has more types of animals, such as snakes, lizards, cheetahs, camels, and plants such as date palms. 
Although the Sahara is hotter, it has a population of approximately 2.5 million people, whereas Antarctica's population is smaller than 5,000, and they are mostly researchers. Despite the terrible conditions, these two deserts are more important than we think. Antarctica's ice sheet stores a larger amount of fresh water than other places on Earth, and the deserts could provide more solar energy, that's energy from the sun, which could be used for clean energy. Unit 7, Part B, Activity 1C. Listen, check and repeat. Alligator. Scorpion. Hippopotamus. Cheetah. Hamster. Rabbit. Unit 7, Part B, Activity 4A. Listen to the radio program about three types of bears and fill in the gaps with the adjectives. Good evening and welcome to DEF Radio. I'm your host, Nick. And today we'll be talking about three of the most interesting bears. Grizzlies, pandas and polar bears. Let's start with pandas. They are from China and they are the most adorable animals ever. However, don't let their cuteness deceive you because they are still dangerous and you won't know when they will attack you. If we talk about speed, pandas are the slowest, while grizzlies are the fastest. Moving on to pandas' white brothers, polar bears live in places that are very cold, such as Russia, Alaska, Canada, Greenland and Norway. They are the most dangerous and the scariest when they're hungry. They also have the biggest feet compared to the other bears. Since they need to protect themselves from the cold weather, their fur is fluffier than brown bears and pandas. Finally, we have the brown bears or grizzlies. They are from Europe, Asia or North America. They are heavier than pandas, but lighter than polar bears. They are more dangerous than pandas when it comes to protecting their cubs. There you have it, folks. Before we move on to our next programme, let's... Unit 8, Part A, Activity 2A. Listen to the radio programme and... 1. Write down the names of any animals that you didn't know. 2. Decide which box A, B or C contains which group of animals. Hello and welcome to the natural world. In today's programme, we are going to talk about some animals that live in Southeast Asia. We are going to talk about three kinds of animal. Insects, reptiles and amphibians and give some examples of them. So, to begin, let's talk about insects. Insects are small animals with six legs and many of them can fly. They often come into the house and many people are scared of them. 
One kind of insect is the beetle. Beetles can be quite big and fat for insects, and are often black, but they don't usually bite or hurt people. Cockroaches are a little similar to beetles and are also big, and many of them have wings and can fly. They come into our houses and they are dirty, so people don't like them and usually kill them. Another kind of insect is the butterfly. Butterflies have big wings that are pretty and colourful, and they are good for the flowers. Probably the most common kind of insect is the mosquito. Mosquitoes are very bad for people because they bite us all the time. They are also dangerous because they can make you very sick. There are also amphibians in Southeast Asia, such as frogs and toads. These animals can live on the land and in the water. Frogs are the most common kind of amphibian. They are green and wet. They eat insects and they move by jumping. People eat frogs. Toads are similar to frogs, but they are usually bigger. They're dry, and they're often grey. Finally, there are reptiles. Reptiles include crocodiles, turtles, snakes. And geckos. They can be very big or very small. Crocodiles are big and long. They live in the water, but they can go on the land. They have big teeth, and they are dangerous because they can eat people. Turtles are big and round with four legs. They can swim very well and live mostly in the sea, but they go onto the beach. To lay eggs, people usually like turtles. Snakes are very common in Southeast Asia too. Snakes are long and thin. They don't have legs and can be very dangerous if they bite you. The last animal for today is the gecko. Geckos are very common and often live in people's houses. They are small and green. And run up the walls. They don't hurt people and are good in the house because they eat mosquitoes and other insects. Unit eight, part A, activity two B. Listen again, and answer the questions. Write the answers in your notebook. Unit eight, part B, activity two A. Listen to Casal talking to Tim about his homework and answer the questions. Hi Tim, listen, can you help me with my biology homework? I have to write a short text about the life cycle of a beetle. We have this diagram and I don't understand it. Okay, well, what don't you understand? Let's have a look. Well, stages mean the different parts of the beetle's life, and the life cycle means all the stages from birth to death, right? Yes, that's right. This isn't too difficult, Casal. It's just that the words are new. Look at the diagram. Which is the first stage in the beetle's life? Well, the first stage must be the egg. It's the smallest, and it can't be an adult first, and an egg later. So that must be the first one. Good. When you have a diagram like a circle, you have to find the first stage to start describing it. So, what's next? Well, that's easy. There's an arrow on the diagram. After that, it's the larva stage. I don't know what that means. Well, it's just. Another stage when it changes from an egg into something different. When the baby insect is born from the egg, it isn't a beetle yet. That comes later. First, it's a larva. 
It looks completely different from a beetle. It's small and long, and it's hard to see the head or the legs. Okay, so first it's an egg, and next it's a larva. After that, it's a pupa. Does that pupa look like a big larva or a small beetle? Well, neither. The pupa is a stage where the larva makes itself into a little round ball. At this time, it can't move and it doesn't even eat. Inside the pupa, the larva slowly changes into a beetle. So first, it's an egg, and then it's a larva. After that, it changes into a pupa, and finally, it's an adult beetle. That's it. When the beetle has grown into an adult, it produces eggs, and it all starts again. That's why it's called a cycle, and the diagram looks like a circle. Okay, thanks. So if I know which is the first stage. And I understand the new words like pupa and larva. It's easy. I feel much better now. Unit eight, part B, activity two B. Listen again, and match the stages with the descriptions. Unit nine, part A, activity two B. Listen, check, and repeat. Water pollution. Overfishing. Overpopulation. Deforestation. Air pollution. Unit nine, part A, activity three A. Listen to people talking about environmental problems. Match them with the pictures in Activity Two A. Our environmental problems are all interconnected. Each of us, all kinds of living things, affect one another. One. Our rainforests, where we have the biggest number of trees, are being cleared to build more houses and factories. The Amazon rainforest in Brazil is the largest rainforest on Earth, but thousands of trees are being cut there every day. This is frightening, because trees produce the air we breathe, oxygen. They also absorb carbon dioxide, the type of air we don't need, and is very dangerous to us. So, without our trees. It will be difficult to live. This problem is called deforestation. Two, another big environmental problem is about the air we breathe. This means the air we breathe is becoming unsafe and sometimes dangerous. This is because there are a lot of harmful gases around us. There are many causes of this problem, but one of them is the bad black smoke that comes out of our factories. If the air we breathe is bad, it will be difficult to live, and we could get sick. I am really worried just thinking about air pollution. Three. Our third problem refers to the fact that the number of people in the world is increasing really fast. Because there are a lot of people on Earth, some people are cutting down our trees and destroying our rainforests so they can build houses, roads, shopping centers, and even parking lots. If there are too many people on Earth, where will the animals live? Where can we plant trees? Overpopulation is really problematic. Other living things die because of us. Number four. 
When we think of this problem, a lot of people imagine rivers and lakes filled with trash. Sometimes I feel frustrated just telling people not to throw their rubbish in the river. However, it is more than just seeing seas being filled with plastic bags, cans, bottles and other kinds of rubbish. The most dangerous thing about it is the rubbish we don't see, the harmful chemicals and substances that we throw away into our oceans, maybe thinking that they will disappear there. That is a fact that many people don't realise about water pollution. 5. Many people think catching a lot of fish, including baby fish, is not a problem at all. Well, it is a problem. We catch too many fish and we don't give enough time for them to reproduce. This is bad because in the future we might not have any fish at all. Some fish eat other fish, so when we catch a lot of them, this means other fish and animals that live in the ocean will not have food. They too die. As a result, overfishing is a really big problem and we need to do something about it. Unit 9, Part A, Activity 3B. Listen again. Write true or false. Unit 10, Part A, Activity 2A. Listen to a conversation between Lekna and Jani. What are they talking about? Hello, Mom. I'm back. Who are you trying to call? Hi, dear. I'm trying to call your uncle, but he isn't picking up. Maybe he's busy. You look worried, Mom. Did anything bad happen? This morning, people at the market said there was a drought in Badambong. They said the drought was serious and some people got sick as well. Your uncle lives here and I haven't talked to him lately. That's why I'm worried. Actually, I listened to the radio and heard the news about it this morning. They said that a lot of trees died and the rice fields were dry. They also said that some of the animals, like chickens and cows, would die if there is no rain soon. Did they mention if the drought is happening in the whole province or just some areas? I'm not exactly sure, but I think they said that some areas were okay. Don't worry so much, Mom. Maybe where Uncle lives? is not affected by this drought. Last time, he told me he just started to grow some new fruit trees so he could sell them. I hope his area is okay so it does not affect his business. Unit 10, Part A, Activity 2B. Listen again. Decide if the sentences are true or false. Write the answers in your notebook. Unit 11, Part A, Activity 3A. Copy the sentences about a fire drill into your notebook and put them in the right order. Welcome to my instruction session for the fire drill. I want to make a few points before we begin the actual practice. Firstly, when you hear the alarm, stay calm and walk to the emergency exit. Do not run or push each other because it will delay your exit and might lead to people falling over. Next, it's very important to take the alarm seriously, even during our practice. So leave the building immediately. If the building is filling up with smoke, Stay low on the floor and crawl. Smoke goes up, so if you stay low, you'll have more oxygen and a clearer view. Also, don't inhale the smoke because it's very bad for your lungs. When you exit the room, leave the lights on. When the firefighters arrive, it helps them see the room better. 
Moreover, watch out for the hot door handles. Before opening any door, check for smoke and touch the handle or door first. Never open a door that is hot or has smoke coming through because there must be a fire behind it. After you leave the room, close the door. It helps slow the fire down by stopping oxygen from moving round the building easily. Once you're outside, move away from the building. People always want to watch, but by doing so, they might block the firefighters from doing their job. It's safer to be far away, since no one knows when the building might fall or explode. Finally, wait for permission. You should not enter the building unless the firefighters say it's safe. All right, that's the end of this session. Does anyone have a question before we begin our fire drill? Unit 11, Part A, Activity 3C. Listen again and check. Unit 11, Part B, Activity 1B. Listen, check, and repeat. Outdoors. Landslide. Hurricane. Blizzard. Volcanic eruption. Indoors. Thunderstorm. Electrical fire. Unit 11, Part B, Activity 2A. One of Somnang's co-workers asked him to repeat the fire drill instructions. Listen and fill in the gaps. Hello, how was the fire drill yesterday? Hey, Chan Ti. It was very useful. The instructor gave us lots of instructions before beginning the drill. Can you summarize them for me? I was absent because of my terrible cold. Sure. When you hear the fire alarm, don't panic and quickly leave through the emergency exit. Don't stay in the building or think that the alarm is false, because that's dangerous. Next, don't walk across the room when it's full of smoke. Isn't it faster to walk? Although it's faster to walk, the smoke is very dangerous. Never inhale too much smoke. It's bad for your lungs, and the lack of oxygen can make you faint easily. Also, you won't be able to see clearly, so crawling is the best way. When you exit the room, always leave the lights on, and don't ever open the door without checking. If the handle or the door is hot, there is a high chance that there is fire behind it. Once you confirm that the door is safe, Always close the door after you exit to cut off the oxygen from entering the room. When can I go back to work? You really love working. Well, there are two more commands after you leave the building. Don't ever crowd in front of the building and never re-enter without permission from the firefighters. Okay, I got it. Thanks, Somnang. You're welcome. Unit 11, Part B Activity 3. Copy the sentences into your notebook. Listen and circle the words that are stressed. Example. Don't go near the windows. One. 
don't ever stay outdoors. Two, never leave the building. Three, don't ever open the door before checking. Four, always wait for permission. Five, call the police officers. Six, never drive over rocks. Unit 13, Part A, Activity 2B. Now listen and check your guesses. Tick the numbers you hear from Activity 2A. Hey Tim, what's wrong with you? We just lost the football match because of you. You didn't play well today. Sorry, Casal. I'm not well. I have some homework which I can't do. I might fail this subject and I'm not happy. OK, relax. It's just homework. I can't do it. That's the problem. I, I still don't know much about your country. My country? Cambodia? Oh my, just ask, Tim. You know I can have you. All right. I don't think you know the answer to this, but how high is the highest mountain in Cambodia. Ah, easy. It's 5,948 feet, which is about 1,812 meters, and it's in Kompung Spu province. Wow, this is easier than I thought. OK, how many provinces are there in Cambodia? Well, Cambodia is divided into 25 provinces. The largest province is Mundulkiri and the smallest is Kaip. Kaip is only 336 square kilometers. Thanks, Kasal. I know some really interesting facts about the Tonle Sap Lake, too. Uh, would you like to hear them? Well, I know the lake grows up to 10,000 square kilometers or more during the wet season. But in the dry season, it only measures about 2,800 square kilometers. It's also... It's also home to about 300 kinds of fish. Fine. You think you know a lot, huh? Well, how many countries are there in Asia? 48. But only one country in the world has a flag with the building on it. Do you know which country that is, Tim? Yeah. Anchor what? in Cambodia. Huh, maybe we should just go play football again. I've just done my homework. Unit 13, Part A, Activity 2C. Now listen again. Answer the questions. Write in your notebook. Unit 13, Part B, Activity 1B. Listen, check and repeat. Volcanoes. Ocean. Glaciers. Earthquakes. Mountain.
Unit 14, Part A, Activity 2A. Listen to the conversation. Why is Richard talking to Samnang? Hey, Samnang. Hi, Richard. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Samnang. Listen, I had an idea. I'm going on a camping trip to Mondalkiri with my family. We talked yesterday and we'd like to invite you and your family to come with us. It could be really good fun. Camping? You mean sleeping outside in a tent? Yes, exactly. It's really nice when the weather is good. We went camping every year in England. We've already got most of the things we need and we want to try it here in Cambodia. Have you ever been camping? No. We usually stay at a guest house, but it would be interesting and different. I'm sure the kids would like to go, and Lekana likes being outside. I think it's a great idea. Oh, good. Before we go, we will have to go shopping. Vicky and I already have a tent for four people and some sleeping bags. But you will need to get those things too. Okay. And we've already got a torch, but we haven't got any batteries yet. Oh, don't buy batteries. We've already got a lot of them. What else do we need? Well, I haven't got a map of Mondokiri yet. We will need a map to know where to go if we want to go walking or driving. And I haven't got any mosquito repellent yet. That's important so that the mosquitoes don't bite us. Is there anything else that I need to get, Richard? Well, for walking in the forest, you'll need walking boots. Normal shoes aren't strong enough. And a pocket knife is useful, because sometimes you need to cut the plants in the forest. I already have a pocket knife, but not a walking boot. Let's go shopping at the weekend. I have a friend who's already got some camping things that I can use. I'll ask him what he's got and then I'll know what I have to buy too. OK, Sam Nang. Ask him before the weekend and then we'll go shopping together and buy the things that we haven't got yet. Unit 14, Part A, Activity 2B Listen again and answer the questions. Unit 14, Part B, Activity 2A. Listen to Richard talking to his family. Decide who has to do each job. Write V for Vicky, T for Tim and L for Lynn next to the answers to Activity 1 in your notebook. OK, listen everyone, we're going on our camping trip with the Chia family today and there are a lot of things to do before we go. Vicky, have you booked the campsite? We don't want to arrive and find that they don't have space for us. Of course I've booked it. I wouldn't forget that. OK, Vicky, I'm just making sure. And can you fill the car up with petrol, please? I've already filled it up. I did it on the way home when I rented it. Tim, have you checked the car? Yes, I've checked the water, the oil and the lights. Everything looks fine. I haven't loaded the car, though. I'll do that next. You'll need to pack the bags before I can do that, Mum. I've already packed the bags, Tim, so you can load the car when you're ready. Do we know what the weather's going to be like? Lynn, have you listened to the weather forecast? No, I haven't listened to it yet, but I've prepared lunch. It's in the kitchen and it's all ready. I made sandwiches and there's some salad and some fruit. I haven't charged the phones yet, though. I forgot about that. I'll do it now. OK, thanks, Lynn. Tim, have you looked at the map? Have you planned the route from here to Mondokiri? I've planned a route. It was easy. There's really only one route we can take, so we can't get lost. 
I'll show you on the map in a minute. Great. Thanks, Tim. Now, what else did we have to do? Oh, I know. Vicky, have you called the neighbours? They're going to look after the house while we're away. Oh, no. I haven't called them yet. Thanks, Richard. I forgot. I'll call them right now. And Lynn, don't forget to close all the windows before we leave. I've already closed them all. Well, it looks like we're almost ready. Tim, have you decided what time to set off? I'd like to go soon. How about in half an hour? That gives us time to finish everything before we go. OK, I'll call the neighbours first, and then I'll call Lekana and tell her we will pick them up in 45 minutes. Unit 14, Part B, Activity 2B. Listen again. This time, put a tick next to the jobs if they are done, and a cross next to the jobs if they are not done yet. Unit 15, Part A, Activity 2A. Listen to three conversations. What are they talking about? Choose the correct answers. Conversation 1 Hello, Dada. How's everything in Bad Nambong? How are the kids? Hi, sister. The kids are doing well and there's some rain now, so the drought isn't so bad anymore. But a lot of my fruit trees die. You have to let me know if you need any help. I heard from your wife that you had some problems with money for your farm business because of the drought. Yes, because a lot of our fruit trees die, and even some of our animals. You know, I can always lend you some money in this difficult time. I can help you out. Thank you so much, but right now, I think we are okay. I will be in Simriap next month for two days to meet some customers. I'm wondering if I can borrow your motorbike when I'm there. Of course. I'm happy to hear you're coming to Simrib. Some Nam will be happy to see you too. Come and stay at our house. Conversation 2 Vicky, where are you going? Oh, I'm meeting Lisa for coffee. She's in town and gave me a call this morning. That's lovely. I haven't seen Lisa since she moved to Phnom Penh. What's she doing in Simrib? She's here for work. I think she's showing her boss some new hotels to include in their tour package. You know she works in the tourism industry. By the way, do you think I should take her some cookies I made last night? You have to. Lisa always loves your cookies. All right, have fun and say hi to Lisa for me. Conversation 3 Where are you going, Tim? Are you going out? Yes, Lynn. I'm going to Casal's house to play some video games together. I see. Before you go, where's my new cartoon book? Well, what book? You promised me a cartoon book. You said you were going to get it for me from the library. Don't tell me you forgot. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Lynn. I wanted to go to the library yesterday, but then I decided to go later instead. Can you get me that book from the library tomorrow, then? Sure. Sorry again. Unit 16, Part A, Activity 3A. Listen and write true or false. If it's false, write the correct sentence. Does anyone want to play Two Truths and a Lie? What's that? Let me explain. One person says three things they've done, and we'll guess which one is a lie. I see. Tim, let's start with you. OK. I've seen a ghost. I've never fought a bear. I've never eaten crocodile meat. 
Hmm, I think you have eaten that. No, he has never seen a ghost. I agree with Kosal. Kosal and Lin are correct. Why did you say I have eaten crocodile meat? Have you ever eaten it, Chani? No, I haven't tried it. <laughs> okay, my turn. I've been scuba diving. I've been camping with my friends. I've swum across a lake. You've never gone camping. This is the second time I've gone camping. Yeah, you went with your friends last year. Then you haven't swum across a lake. Correct. I'm not a good enough swimmer, and I went scuba diving last December. My turn. I've ridden a horse. I've been stargazing in the forest, and I've built a den. I guess you haven't gone stargazing because I've never heard Tim talking about it. I don't think you built a den. I don't remember going stargazing either. Kosal and Tim are right. By the way, have you ever built a den? It's really fun. No, we haven't built one, but my sister and I have built a wooden house. That sounds cool, Kosal. Let's try that. Let's see. I guess it's my turn now. I've won a boat racing competition. I've played water volleyball. I've learned how to make a fire. I think you've never played water volleyball. Well, I say the third sentence is a lie. I didn't see you make a fire just now, so the last one is a lie. It's the first time you've heard me, Lin. I made that fire. Anyway, all of you are wrong. I've never competed in any boat racing competition. Kids, it's late. Time to go to bed. Okay. okay. Let's discuss who the winner is tomorrow. Unit 16, Part B, Activity 2A. Listen to the conversations and put the sentences in the correct order. 1. Have you caught some fish yet? Yes, I've already caught three fish. I've done it so many times, so it's easy. Lucky you. I haven't learned how to fish yet. 2. Mum, I'm hungry. Haven't you eaten lunch yet? I have, but camping food has never made me feel full. 3. Why haven't you two changed your clothes yet? They're wet. We'll swim again in a bit. Richard said he hasn't swum across the river yet, so we were trying to do that. Then we got hungry. <laughs> 4. You've sat here for almost an hour. Have you spotted any birds yet? I saw a giant ibis. Here's the picture. Wow, you've already seen our national bird. Unit 16, Part B, Activity 2B. Listen again and answer the questions. Unit 17, Part A, Activity 4A. Look at Richard's checklist of things to do before they set off. Listen to the conversation and write down who has done each of the things on the list. Choose your answers from the box. So it's decided then. The boys are all going hiking for the day and the girls are going to relax at the campsite and swim in the river. Dad, I think the girls should come hiking too. Well, nobody is stopping them, Gosal. They just don't want to. So, are we ready to set off soon? Let's check, Tim. We mustn't forget to take water. Has anyone filled the water bottles? Yes, I've already done that. And I went to the market this morning. And I've bought snack bars too. Great. Good job, Tim. Now, has anyone looked at the map yet so that we know where to go? Yes, I've looked at it and I've already planned a route for our hike, but I couldn't find a compass. Oh, it's okay. 
I found the compass. It was in our tent. But I haven't turned on the GPS on my phone. Has anybody done that? No. no. So nobody's turned on the GPS. We have to do that before we go. Richard, what else is there on the checklist? Well, I've checked the first aid kit and that's okay. Cosell, you didn't have a sun hat. Have you got one? Yes, I went to the market with Tim this morning. I've bought a sun hat now. Okay, good. I've listened to the weather forecast and it's going to be very sunny today. Has everybody put on sunscreen? Yes. And remember, it could get cold if we go high up. Gosal and I have brought jackets. Richard and Tim, have you brought jackets? Yes, I have. Tim? Yes, I've brought a jacket too. So, we've already done almost everything. We haven't turned on the GPS or packed the backpacks yet. Let's do those things now, and then we'll be ready to set off. Unit 17, Part B, Activity 2. Listen to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 7 using the phrases in the box. Vicky, I'm getting a bit worried about the boys. They set off early this morning and they've been hiking in the forest for almost 10 hours. Well, why don't you call some Nang if you're worried? I've been calling him for over an hour, but I can't get through. I've been trying Richard's phone too. Well, I agree it's a little strange, but I don't think we should worry too much. Richard has been hiking in the forest since he was a little boy. Well, that's good. I don't think Samnang knows how to use a map and compass. I hope that they are unstuck. Oh, I don't think so. Richard's been reading maps and using compasses for 30 years. He used to go hiking a lot in England. Hello, Kosal? No, it's me, Richard. I'm using Kosal's phone. My phone's lost signal and Sam Lang's has run out of battery. Kosal's phone has just started working. Well, where are you? We've been expecting you to come back since dinner time. I know. I'm sorry. We got lost about two hours ago. We lost the compass. And Kosal's been trying to get a signal on his phone since we got lost so that we can use the GPS and find out where we are. So, what happens next? Well, we've been searching for the road for ages. But now that we have the phone, we can locate it on Google Maps. OK, so can you send me your location? Yes, we'll do that and walk to the nearest road. We need you to drive there and rescue us. I'm sending the location now. Oh, Richard, really? Rescue you? How long have you been worried about being stuck there? You're 10 minutes walk away from the road. I'm sure you'll survive. We'll drive there now and come to the... Unit 21, Part A, Activity 1B. Listen and repeat. Civilization. Impact. Significant. Trade. Account. Military chief. Era. Unit 21, Part A, Activity 4B. Listen 
and complete the voicemail with the previous answers. Hey Kasal, this is Rod. I learned about the Kingdom of Funan this morning and I'm super interested in it now. There wasn't much information in the textbook, so I'm going to find other history books to read more. Anyway, did you know that Ningniet was actually Queen Soma? I've heard of them, but I didn't know they were the same person. This is what happened when I didn't focus during history class. By the way, what I was reading in the library this afternoon, I found some interesting fact about Funan. Firstly, Funanese people were fishermen and farmers. I really don't know what they sold to the Chinese people. Secondly, Queen Soma didn't give the kingdom to Hontieng at all. I mean, only kings rule the country, right? Well, Queen Soma didn't agree. She continued to take care of Funan and made herself the first female ruler. Anyway, I'm going to end this here. You should also read about it so that we can discuss later. Reply to me soon. Unit 21, Part B, Activity 2B. Listen, check and repeat. Example. Kingdom. 1. Crown. Two. Event. Three. Historical. Four. Memory. Five, importance. Unit 21, Part B, Activity 3B. Listen and check. Hey, Lin, what are you doing here? Hi, Kosal. Can you help me with my history homework? I need some answers about the Kingdom of Chenla. We studied about it this morning, but I still have a few questions. Okay, ask. Who fought and took over Funan? From my memory, King Puvetvaraman I won the war around the 6th or 7th century AD, and the kingdom crowned him. Some accounts even showed that he might have been the grandson of the last king of Funan. Oh. I hope not. That would be too sad. Then what was the next event? Who took the throne after him? Let me think. The next event? Ah, it was his cousin named Mahendra Verman. I'm not sure, but I think they didn't fight for the throne. Oh good. I think they had enough fighting. Anyway, Funan believed in Buddhism, right? Did Chenla also? Nope. The importance of Buddhism meant nothing to King Pavetvaraman I. Instead, he was all about Shaivism, which is a part of Hinduism. The god of this religion is Shiva. I've never heard of that religion before. I'll look it up later. Did your teacher talk about water and land Chenla? A little bit. She said Chenla was divided into two in the 8th century. Which year was that again? Around the year 707 AD. Do you know one of the reasons why it fell? Oh, I remember this. It was because they kept fighting each other, right? Exactly. The wars from the inside really destroyed the kingdom. Hmm. Historical events always make me feel sad. Well, that's all I wanted to ask. Thanks, Kosal. You're welcome. Unit 22, Part A, Activity 2B. Listen, check, and repeat. Monarchy is a system of government 
that involves kings and queens. Some countries have kings and queens, like the UK, Cambodia, Thailand, and Spain. Usually, the parents would pass on the throne to their children. Then the children do the same thing over. This goes on generation after generation. The king, queen, and their children make up a royal family. Traditionally, the Heirs to the throne are the male members of the family. When a king dies, he passes on the responsibility to his son. This means his son becomes a king and continues the work he started. Some people like royal families so much; they worship them. They bow their heads when they see them. They don't make much noise and are very respectful around them. Sometimes they collect pictures of them too. Unit twenty-two, Part A, Activity Four A. Listen and write the missing words. Use the words in Activity Three. Write in your notebook. King Sayanok was a man admired by many Cambodians. He was loved not only because he cared deeply about his people, but also because he had a good sense of humor and was very talented. King Sayanok went to a few French schools in Vietnam. He inherited the throne from his father when he was only eighteen years old. He served as a monarch. Prime Minister, figurehead of the Communist Revolution, and leader in exile. He got married in 1952 to Queen Noradom Moninyet, and they had two children: Noradom Sayamoni, the current King of Cambodia, and Noradom Narendra Pung. His eldest son and half brother to the King Noradom Ranaret. Became the co-prime minister, alongside Prime Minister Hun Sen, in 1993, when Cambodia held their very first democratic election. King Sayanok was also a great musician and learned to play the saxophone while he was at school. He was also a filmmaker. Throughout his lifetime, he produced, directed, and even wrote films. On his own, it was said that sometimes, in important meetings, he would try to impress his guests by showing them his films. He died in 2012, and in 2013, on the first anniversary of his death, a huge statue of him was built near the Independence Monument. Unit twenty-two, Part A, Activity Four B. Listen again. Answer the questions. Unit twenty-three, Part B, Activity Two A. Listen to the radio program and answer the questions. Hello and welcome to this week's Wonders of the World, the program in which we talk about a different famous building every week. In today's program, we're going to talk about a very famous building, the Sydney Opera House in Australia. The Sydney Opera House is located in the city of Sydney, Australia. It is one of the most recognisable buildings in the world. A long time ago, in the late 1940s, a venue to hold concerts and music events was planned for Sydney. Later, in 1955, a competition was held to design the venue. The competition was won by an architect from Denmark, and he was given the job of designing the opera house. Construction of the building. Was started 
in 1959. The Opera House was very difficult to build and there were many problems, so it took a very long time to build. At the beginning, it was expected to cost seven million dollars and to take four years. In the end, it took 14 years. It was completed in 1973 and cost one hundred and two million dollars. Today, over one thousand five hundred concerts are held at the Sydney Opera House annually. These events are attended by over one point two million people. The building itself is visited by over eight million people annually. Several concert halls and theatres are located inside, as well as cafes, restaurants, bars and shops. Unit 24, Part B, Activity 3A. Somnang is asking Kassel to accompany his American friend, who's in Siemrip for the first time. Listen to their conversation. Answer the questions. Andy, this is my son, Kosal. Kosal, this is my friend, Andy, who I told you about. Today, Kosal's free and he wants to help show you around so he can practice his English. Hello, Andy. Nice to meet you. Hi, Kosal. It's lovely to meet you. And thank you so much for keeping me company today. I'm sure we'll have a great time. No problem. I'm excited as well. I'm really sorry that I can't drive you guys around today, as I have an important work event to attend. I've already booked a tuk-tuk to take you around for the whole day. Oh, the tuk-tuk is here. Have fun and call me if there's any problem. Thank you for arranging everything, Samnang. Have a good day and I'll see you at dinner. So, Kosal, I've heard from your dad that you also go to a football club. How awesome! Can you tell me how often you have your football practice? I only have time to go to the football club once a week on the weekend. Andy, I know you are from America, but would you mind telling me which state you are from? Oh no, not at all. I'm from Hawaii. Do you know where it is in the States? I do. Hawaii is a group of islands in the Pacific, am I right? I've seen it in movies before. It's got beautiful mountains and beaches. Yes, you're correct. By the way, Kusal, where are we headed to now? We are going to Prasad Angkor Wat now, and we will spend some time there until lunch. You've got so much to see. I've heard many great and amazing things about Angkor Wat. I can't believe I finally get to see it now. Can you tell me when Angkor Wat was built? Based on our history lesson, the construction of Angkor Wat was started in the early 12th century. It was in the era of King Surya Varaman II. Angkor Wat is the pride of Cambodia. I'm sure it is a national treasure. I know the foreign visitors have to buy a pass before going. Do you have any idea how much it costs? You do need to get a ticket. There are options and the prices vary. I'm sorry, but I don't know how much each option is. But don't worry. We will stop at the ticket center on the way. We will see three temples today, so I think it's best if you get the one-day pass. That sounds good. And yes, I'll get the one-day pass then. Oh, here we are. This is the ticket center. Let's go and get your ticket. Unit 24, Part B, Activity 3B. Listen again. Choose the questions you hear in the conversation. Unit 25, Part A, Activity 3A. Listen to Jani talking about the legend of the Yeti at her school. What three views were expressed about the Yeti? 
Write your answers in your notebook. Hello, my name is Jenny, and my report today is about the Yeti. So, is the Yeti a bear? Is it a man? Is it an ape? Maybe a combination of all three. Who knows? The Yeti is a strange, mysterious creature that some people believe lives in the Himalayas. Some people think the Yeti might be a bear. In fact, when the explorer Charles Howard Burry found some large footprints in 1921, he concluded that the footprints look something like a man-bear snowman. Some recent research, based on DNA analysis, has confirmed that the Yeti could be a hybrid of an ancient polar bear and a brown bear. However, this study was disproven by other scientists who said that the hair they took DNA samples from was damaged, and there was no exact match to the polar bear that existed a long time ago. Still, others believe that the Yeti may be half human, half ape. Similar to how humans looked like thousands of years ago, some scientists think this is because some other species of humans haven't been discovered yet, and they might have gone unnoticed for a long time. Whether the yeti is a bear man or an ape man, one thing is certain: it can't be small. In fact, some people say its average height is about six feet. That's 1.8 meters. Others do not believe in the yeti at all. They think that the yeti can't exist and that there isn't enough evidence to prove it. The Sherpa, the people that live high up in the mountains in Nepal, could just be telling stories about the yeti so that their children stay close. It's very cold up there, and there certainly are a lot of wild animals roaming around. So the parents must be really worried. They need to keep their children close all the time. So, what do you think the yeti is? Is it a bear man? Is it an ape man? Is it nothing? You decide. Unit twenty-five, part A, activity three B. Listen again. Choose the correct answer. Write the answers in your notebook. Unit twenty-seven, part B, activity two A. Sokka is talking to Kasal about their chores. Listen and put their tasks in order. Sokka, you look tired. What's wrong? Hey, Gasol. I'm just so sick of my chores on Sunday. I don't want to do the housework. Tell me about it. In the morning, I have to do the washing and ironing for everyone. Same here. After making the bed, I also need to do the laundry. But guess what? I have to do the cooking in the afternoon too. I'm luckier. I only need to do the shopping, and my mom does the cooking for us. Oh, I always do the gardening, but I'm not complaining because it's fun. You like doing that? I don't at all. So my brother does it, but apart from that, he does nothing. He's very lazy. Last week he said he would make a cake for my birthday, but in the end, I was the one that made it. Well, did he do the dishes at least? Of course not. He's terrible. You should sit down with him and make a clear decision and plan on what he needs to do. Maybe he just forgot. Yeah, he's very forgetful. I'll do that next time. Well, good luck. I need to make a phone call. Talk to you later. Okay. Unit twenty-seven, Part A, Activity Three A. Listen and complete Jenny's list of what she has to do this Sunday. How many people talk to her? Good morning, Jenny. Oh, good morning, Mom. Listen, I'm leaving in five minutes, and I won't be home until this evening. I need you to do something for me. 
Sure. First, I need you to make two sandwiches for your dad and Gosal. Okay, mom. Next, I want you to do the cleaning around the house. I can do that. Thank you. Lastly, we have so many dirty clothes. Okay, I'll do the laundry as well. Great. See you later. Jenny, can you make a small cake for me? Yes, I can. But why do you need one? I just like some. Okay, I'll make it now, and you can have it tomorrow. Do you want me to make some coffee as well? Oh yes, please. Also, make a cup of tea too. I want to give it to Richard. No problem. Gosal, what's wrong? Mom told me to make a fire for her to grill some meat, but the football match is starting on TV. Oh, you go ahead. I'll do it. Really? Thank you, dear sister. By the way, Pisay called an hour ago. She said you need to make a plan for your trip to Kampot. Okay. Anything else? I need some help with my homework, so. All right. I'll help you when you do your homework. Thanks. Unit Twenty Seven, Part B, Activity Two B. Listen again and choose the correct options. Unit Twenty Eight, Part A, Activity Two. Listen to a class about food at Jenny's University, and answer the questions. Good morning, everyone. In today's class, we are going to learn about nutrition. Does anyone know what nutrition means? I do. It means the things in food that are good for our bodies, doesn't it? That's right, Jenny. Nutrition is the study of what is in the food that we eat and why it is good for us. The good things in food which our bodies need are called Nutrients. Does anyone know any examples of nutrients? I think so. Proteins and vitamins are nutrients, aren't they? That's right. Well done. Your body needs proteins to repair damage and to build muscles. Vitamins are necessary to keep you healthy and to stop you from getting sick. What about fat? You need to eat fat, don't you? But it's also bad for you. How does that work? Excellent question. Yes, there are good and bad fats. Good fats contain a lot of nutrients for your body, and can also help to keep your brain healthy. But bad fats are bad for your blood and your heart. All fats are fattening if you eat a lot of them. There are other nutrients, aren't there? I read about it, but I don't remember what they are. Well, there are carbohydrates. These are in things like rice, bread, and potatoes. They are important because they give you energy and are good for your brain. But if you eat too many, they are very fattening. Finally, there are trace elements. These are things like metals that you need in very small amounts, and they can help your body to work properly. But food contains some bad things too, doesn't it? Yes, that's right, Jenny. Food also contains things like bad fats and oils, sugar, salt, and MSG. You need to eat most of these things in small amounts, but eating a lot of them. Is bad for you. We have talked about this before in class, haven't we? When we talk about junk food. Yes, we have. Your body needs some salt, but too much of it is bad for your blood and your heart. So you should be careful with it. And sugar is very fattening in large amounts. It's also bad for your teeth and for your blood. So not too much. You've mentioned something called MSG, haven't you? What is that? It's a white powder that people put in food to change the taste. Actually, we don't know if it's bad for you or not, but some people say that it gives them headaches and makes them feel unwell. 
Unit 28, Part B, Activity 2A. Listen to an exercise trainer at Tim and Casal's football club. Then, match the words and phrases with the definitions. Hello team! I'm here today to talk to you about exercise. I'm going to tell you about different kinds of exercise and how they can help you stay healthy and in good shape. Ah, you mean that we should try to stay fit and strong, don't you? Yes, exactly. So, first of all, what's the difference between fitness and strength? They are the same, aren't they? Well, no, not exactly. Anyone else? I know. If you're fit, you can do things like running and jumping for a long time. And if you are strong, you can lift and push heavy things. That's right, isn't it? Yes, that's it. Fitness is about being healthy and active. Strength is about having power in your body. So, do you think that the exercises that we do to improve fitness and to gain strength are the same or different? They must be different, mustn't they? Yes, they are. Exercise that we do to keep fit is called cardio. It's short for a long and difficult word, but it doesn't matter. We usually just say cardio. Running is an example of cardio. Can you think of any more? Yes. How about power walking when people walk very fast? That could be cardio, couldn't it? Yes, that is also cardio. It is good for fitness and for health. Other common cardio exercises that people do include cycling, rowing, and swimming. All of them are good for fitness. I want to get stronger and have big muscles. Cardio isn't good for that, is it? No, not really. To build muscles and get strong, you need to do resistance training. That means using weights, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Good examples of resistance training include weight training, press-ups, and squats. They will all build muscle and make you stronger. So we have to choose which type of exercise to do, don't we? Yes. But you should do a mix of both. Cardio is good for losing weight and improving fitness. And resistance training is good for building muscle and gaining strength. So each week, try to do some of each kind of exercise. Unit 28, Part B, Activity 2B. Listen again and complete the notes. Unit 29, Part B, Activity 2A. Listen to Tim reading his writing homework to his classmates. What is Tim talking about? Good morning, everyone. I have enjoyed listening to all the inventions that we heard about in class today. For me, I'm going to talk about the invention that I think is the most amazing and useful. It has helped billions of people around the world to connect to each other. Can you guess what it is? It is the Internet. Do you know that the Internet was invented by not just one single person, but by a group of people who were scientists, engineers, and programmers in the 1960s? The Internet allows us to communicate easily, no matter how far we are from each other. For example, I can chat or do video calls with my grandparents and uncle who live in England. They can also send us photos of beautiful places when they go on their holidays. With the Internet, 
we can search for information which we might not be able to easily find in books. For example, I used the internet to search about the internet when I did this homework. Unit 30, Part A, Activity 2A. Listen and order the inventions. This salty snack was created in 1853 in New York. Chef George Crum was working at Moon's Lake Lodge and Resort. One customer was always complaining and sending his fried potatoes back. He kept saying the potatoes were not crunchy. Tired of his complaints, Crum sliced the potatoes as thin as possible. Then he fried them in hot oil and added lots of salt. The customer loved them and so did lots of people in New York and across the world. John Kellogg and his brother were working for a hospital when they discovered what is now a common breakfast food and snack by accident. The year was 1894. They had to prepare and select the kind of food the patients could eat. One day, while his assistants were boiling wheat, he was chatting to his brother. They accidentally left the wheat cooking too long. When they took it off, the wheat separated into flakes and the brothers quickly realised that they could bake these into a crispy snack. After more experiments, they found out that they could use corn instead of wheat. This children's toy wasn't supposed to be a toy. It was invented as a wallpaper cleaner in 1955. Noah McVicker designed it while working with his brother at a soap factory. Unfortunately, a new kind of wallpaper was invented soon after, which could be cleaned with water. McVicker's product was no longer needed. While McVicker was worrying about his business, Kay Zufal, a nursery school teacher, was making decorations with her students using the wallpaper cleaner. She later told the McVickers about it. They decided to remove the detergent and add colouring, turning it into a children's toy. It was Kay who suggested the name Play-Doh. Unit 30, Part A, Activity 2B. Listen again. Write PC for potato chips, CF for cornflakes, and PD for Play Doh. Unit 30, Part A, Activity 3. Listen and complete the sentences. 1. While his assistants were boiling wheat, he was chatting to his brother. 2. While McVicker was worrying about his business, Kay Zufal was making decorations with her students using the wallpaper cleaner. Unit 31, Part B, Activity 2A. Lynn and two of her classmates are competing in a school competition. What are the topics or subjects of the three rounds? Welcome to our annual school competition! Each year, we have a friendly competition between classes of different grades about general knowledge from various subjects. Today, our two amazing grade 8 classes will join us. 
Give it up for Team A from Class 8A, Lynn, Brad, and Sammy! And now, give it up for Team B from Class 8B, Diana, Rose, and John! Thank you. Both teams look lovely and ready. First, I'd like to introduce the rules. We will have three rounds. The screen will show three questions about one subject at each round. Each team is given a board to write answers on. Once you hear the bell, you can start writing the answers down. When you finish, you must hit the bell in front of you. The team that hits their bell first, and with more correct answers, gets a point. The team that wins today will move forward to the next stage of the competition. Are we clear? Yes. 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 Right, here we go. Remember, you can only start writing when you hear the bell. The subject of round one is science. Show the questions, please. Team A has pressed their bell. Let's take a look at your answers. Can you read them, please? Question one. Which planet is closest to the sun? We had Mercury. Number two. Who developed the theory of relativity? Albert Einstein. And three. What can travel faster than sound waves? We say light waves. So. Let's see if Team A got everything correct. Show the answers, please. Yes, congratulations, Team A. You've scored a point. OK, now are we ready for round two? The subject is geography. Show the questions. Team B has already pressed the bell. Team B, tell us your answers, please. Uh, question one, which country has the biggest land area? We said Russia. And two, What's the smallest continent? Oceania. And last question, how many countries in Asia does the Mekong River flow through? The answer is six countries. And the answers are correct. Congratulations, Team B. <laughs> and now, on to our last round. It's going to be about one important discovery in history. Here we go. Oh, we've heard the bell. And it's from Team A. Let's hear from them. Number one, who discovered penicillin? Dr. Fleming. Number two, when did he or she discover it? Our answer is 1928. And for the last question, since when has penicillin become widely available? Since 1945? Thank you, Team A. Let's see if Team A can score the point and win. So here we go. Show the correct answers, please. Yes! Congratulations, Team A from Class 8A! You've scored another point and win today's competition! Great 
job to both teams. And congratulations again, Team A, for moving forward to the next stage of the competition. Unit 31, Part B, Activity 2C. Listen again and check your answers. Unit 32, Activity 1A. Listen and write the words in your notebook. Inventor. Carbohydrates. Proteins. Weight training. Laboratory. Unhealthy. Programmer. Infection. Cardio. Investigation.